G'day and welcome to the Grow Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Truen. Each week, we speak with an owner who has grown a business with 5 to 30 team members to something bigger. Diving into their numbers and unearthing the pain they've experienced, we explore what they did to overcome each barrier and what they would do differently from day one. Let's get into it. Welcome, everybody. Today, I'm interviewing Jack Daly, who specialises in sales and sales management and of all recent years in helping people design and live their best lives. And Jack's based in San Clement in California, USA. And today, we're going to be discussing building a life by design. So thanks for your time, Jack. You betcha, Michael. I, you know, I'm fresh back from uh, down under uh, in August of this past year and got to see a lot of my friends that I hadn't seen since the pandemic. So uh, I'm, I'm glad that we re- re- reconnected and I'm looking forward to today. Yeah, awesome, Jack. And um, just in that context, I think I'm trying to remember we met probably 10 years ago at a growth faculty event where I attended a workshop with um, with you and a few clients, one of them being Steve Miller and uh, who you came down and spent a weekend with him uh, a number of years ago now, but um, I guess there's the connections there and I've seen you a few times over the journey and got a lot out of each time I've heard you speak or been involved and and sort of follow you and we have a few uh, messages in between. So um, it's, it's great to have you on the podcast. So um, tell our audience a bit about you and your experience on this topic, mate. Yeah, uh, you know, so I just issued my uh, 10th book uh, this uh, past year, and it's called Jack Daly's Life by Design. And it is so different, Michael, than all of the other books that I've writ- written previously. All the nine books that preceded this were about how to grow your business. Um, I started six companies from scratch, one employee, me, into national firms in the U.S., um, one of them had 2,600 salespeople, uh, all organic growth, uh, no acquisitions. So your audience being the smaller entrepreneur business owner, I want them to understand I can relate very well. But my uh, my expertise is how to scale companies in a very quick and profitable way. Um, but when I was locked down in the pandemic, I decided I'm going to write the book that I've wanted to write for a long time, which is how to lead an intentionally led life, exceptional life, while not impairing your business. So that's what Jack Daly's Life by Design is about. And if people didn't want to read the book, I'm good with that. They could just go to my website at jackdalyslifebydesign.com. And uh, there's over 100 pages of templates and forms and processes, both filled out by my life, as well as blank uh, templates for people to go and access for free and sit down and design their life. Uh, You know, what I have found is business people uh, lead a better business, generally speaking, than a personal life. And there's no reason to compromise one versus the other. So that's what the most recent book's about. Yeah, that's uh, that's awesome, Jack. And and certainly I can uh, uh, totally agree with you. And I guess that's what uh, the Grow a Small Business is all about, helping them um, integrate both business and personal life, because there's no reason you can't do it, as you say. Um, yeah. Look, look, if, if I take just a quick snapshot, uh, you know, I've run a marathon in all 50 states. I've run a marathon in all seven continents. Uh, uh, some of those marathons are like on the Great Wall of China, or one of them's in Antarctica. One was at the North Pole. Uh, I've played 96 of the top 100 golf courses in the United States. Uh, I've done Ironmans on all the continents except for Antarctica because they don't have one there. Uh, and visited all of the libraries of the presidents of the United States. And the list just goes on and on and on. In fact, there's close to 500 items on my bucket list, and 73% of those are now complete. And it's a list that you don't want to complete. I actually was feeding it more items uh, as recent as today. Uh, Now, some of the things that I haven't gotten done on my list are pretty big items, like carry the torch during the Olympics or meet a president in the Oval Office 
or fly on Air Force One. Um, you know, people look at me and go, what are you putting all these crazy things on here? You, 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 you're not gonna be able to do that. Well, uh, it's amazing. They'll look at the list. It's, my list is on my website, jackdailyslifebydesign.com. And you'll see there's some crazy stuff on there. In fact, you know this, Michael, I did not know how to swim until I was 58 years old. And between 58 and 66, I did 15 full Ironmans, which starts with a 3.8 kilometer um, swim on the clock. Uh, so it's all just a matter of us choosing what we want to do. No different than the crazy entrepreneurs that we are when we decide, hey, let's build a business. How many times did I hear people say, oh, you can't build that business? Sure you can. Why not? Absolutely. That's a mindset, isn't it? And um, it just reminds me of all those things you've done. And uh, when we first met probably I said, 10 years ago, it was inspirational. It certainly helped me. Um, over the last decade, sort of uh, get focused on on stuff you want to do, because uh, as you said, there's no reason you can't do it. Um, and I, I guess we'll talk a little bit further about that. So if you sort of bring that into a, it's a small business owners um, situation, um, what are some sort of things they should be aware of with respect to to uh, to that and helping them actually take control of their life. Yeah, so I, 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 there's a there's a ton that I can share, right? You know that, Michael. You've sat in my sessions for yeah. eight hours. And yeah. It seemed like we had just gotten started, right? Yeah. Uh, but look, uh, uh, one thing as an entrepreneur, you need to know uh, what success is. What are you trying to build? What is the vision? What I ask my uh, clients to do is paint the picture. What does the company look like five years from now? Of what locations are you going to be operating in? Are you going to do it over the web? Are you going to do it retail? Are you going to do a mix? Is it retail, wholesale? Uh, uh, how many people? What's the revenue line going to be? What's the profit line going to be? What are the margins going to be like? How many salespeople are going to have? I need to know what your vision is of what you're trying to build. You can't get there unless you know what there is. So that's item number one. The second item that I would share is key people in key spots. Uh, I, whatever business I've built, uh, I, I didn't build it by myself. Uh, and so there are key spots that we have uh, that we need to fill with really terrific people. Be very, very cautious about the people that you hire. And remember, as the company scales, the people that you start with may not be the people that you end with because they're good at some size, but not good at the size that you might be going to in your vision. And um, and then the third thing I would offer is uh, you got to build it with a strong culture. And when I talk about culture, I'm talking about creating an environment in your business where the people who work there don't get up moaning and groaning about having to go to work, but they actually jump out of bed excited and say, hot damn, I get to go to work at this company. Because if you could create that kind of a culture, you have a competitive, sustainable advantage. So for me, as an entrepreneur, those are the big three. But let me add to the list. The things I would add to the list as you scale your business is the importance of systems and processes. Um, uh, look, uh, the very best salespeople follow a process. Um, as you scale and increase the number of salespeople, you don't want uh, each of them operating in a different fashion. It ought to be run by best practices. And in fact, when I wrote my best-selling business book eight years ago, Hyper Sales Growth, um, which, by the way, uh, a month ago was uh, the number one best-selling business book on Amazon eight years later. I mean, I don't even understand that. But when we wrote, when I wrote that book, um, the importance of having a sales playbook was underscored. And then the other thing that really we hammered through in this book was high payoff activities. What I really stress to my business clients is, are you working on the most important things? And I can tell you, Michael, you know what? Uh, when we go into companies and look at the sales team, more than 50% of their time is being spent on not things that are high payoff. High payoff activities for a salesperson, win new customers, grow the ones you got. Whatever things that contribute to that, that's all they should be working on. I don't want my salespeople doing anything other than winning new customers and growing the ones I have. Yeah, always. Uh, that's one of the major takeaways when I first uh, 
heard you was a process, process, process. Um, and obviously in that context with sales, but that's across the whole the whole business. Um, and as you say, those higher payoff activities are all about selling and, and growing the business. And and the other one as an adjunct to that was, you know, the employment and the introduction of sales support people to uh, to allow them to to do that more. Yeah, well, you know, I, you, you, I thought you were going to steal my one-liner, uh, which is if you don't have an assistant, you are an assistant. Yeah. There are things that need to be done in sales, but not necessarily done by the salesperson, right? Um, and so, you know, you have to be really, really critical in terms of how are those people utilizing their time? There's a magical, magical number out there, and everybody on the planet has the same number. 168. That's the number of hours we human beings get allocated to us each week. Now that's pure math, seven days times 24 hours a day. But we don't get 168 in reality. We have to sleep. That's that's eight hours a day times seven is we lose 56. We slept through those. We got to eat. We got to exercise. We do social things. And all of a sudden we've got 40 to 60 hours maybe to allocate to our business we better be sure that we're working on the most important things. Find it hard to define a clear strategy, then communicate it and execute it alongside the rest of your team? Or you currently don't work a simple quarterly strategic plan to boost your team's performance? Our Business Growth Formula online course is perfect for small business owners with 5 to 30 team members wanting to grow. We share the mindsets, habits and tools to be a legendary leader in your business. GrowSmallBusiness.com Yeah, absolutely, and uh, and you often hear, and I do as a as a business coach, you know, business owners say, "I don't have time for that," um, but that's not the right, is it? It's more they don't prioritize it, so it's a matter of what you prioritize and and focusing on it, right? Yeah, look, look, uh, uh, I I don't mean this to pat myself on the back. I use it illustratively. In the National Speakers Association, every four years they do a survey of all the members. And I am ranked in the top 1% of income earners as a professional speaker. And a lot of professional speakers are following me on social media and they're going, I don't understand how this guy does it. He's running marathons all over the world and he's doing triathlons and he's doing Ironmans and he's writing books and he's got magazines. And I mean, there aren't enough hours in the day, but the difference is how I utilize my hours. For example, my average air travel is about 200 to 225,000 air miles a year. Um, if I were to book that travel for hotels, airlines, rental cars, all that that goes on, uh, that would be a very poor use of my time. The majority of the speakers are doing that on their own. Uh, I, I, I do a workbook. You know, you've sat in my sessions if you did a full day session with me, you got probably a 50 to 60 page workbook from me in terms of that. Uh, if I tried to do a 50 page workbook on a computer, uh, it would take me a year and it would look like a kindergartner did it. Uh, but but I can give it to somebody to knock it out in a couple of days. Uh, and so I'm very judicious about how I use my time and the team that I have supporting me. No employees in my company right now all just outside third-party people working out of their homes and doing different things. But here's what all of them hear from me. I only do three things. I speak, I travel to where I speak, and I have fun. And anything else that goes on in this company, one of you people has got to do, right? And so I, 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 sometimes people on my team will send me an email and I'll send it back to the whole team and say, somehow this mistakenly came to me. I only do three things, speak, travel, fun, figure this shit out. Uh, that, that's it. Yeah. And uh, it's just being disciplined around it, isn't it? And um, I remember I like it's Jim Collins always talks about consistency and discipline to the key characteristics of, you know, successful businesses. And um, so certainly you live that. Yeah, so, you know, I went from kindergarten all the way through college in private schools with process, systems, and discipline. 
Then I went during the Vietnam War, I went into the service and was a captain of the United States Army. And what's the military about? Systems, process, systems, process. And, uh, and then when I graduated from college, I was a, a, an accountant, a CPA with Arthur Anderson. And what was that about? Systems and process, system and process. So as I started building my business, I just said, we're going to do systems and processes. Yeah, makes sense, and it just provides consistency, right, across the across the business and, and across your life. For sure, and you know what? Since you brought up the life by design early on, Michael, um, this this is this is a a system that I talk about in the book, and this this thing comes with me everywhere I go. Inside are my personal goals. Um, all documented. They're on my website for people to see. And at the first of the year, this is on my website and I give it out to five people that I call the board of directors of my life to hold me accountable. Every day, I write down every single thing I do that day that relates to the things that are in my goals. This is what I'm doing personally. And there are the high payoff activities and month by month tracking. And there's where it looked like last year. That's what I'm doing on the personal side of my life. Can you just imagine how I have done that on my business? And by the way, I started doing that process on my personal life when I was 13 years old. I have 60 years worth of that data. Yeah, well, so from a for a small business owner, sort of, you know, starting from scratch in that context, is there sort of one or two things you could share to help them get started? In For sure. Um, so I'm a voracious reader. Last last year, I read 104 books. Um, and so I'm going to give you some names of books uh, that I would highly recommend. Mindset by Carol DeWick. Essentialism by McCowan. Uh, and Relentless um, by Grover, Tim Grover. Now, the, those three books and one more. The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. Great book. Yeah. So, so just in a summary, mindset. We get to choose. We're not born with this. We get to choose. You're either a growth mindset person or a fixed mindset person. A growth mindset looks at every challenge as where is the opportunity. The fixed mindset person looks at, uh, looks at life and says, I think I'm screwed. Uh, we're out of business. So we get to choose, I'm a growth mindset guy, right? Essentialism yep. talks about, are you working on the most important things? Focus precedes success. And too many people try to do too many things. So essentialism is a very quick read, very, very powerful. Relentless is by Grover. This is the guy that uh, did the physical and mental training of um, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and a lot of other sports figures. And basically, it's the power to take it to another level, no matter what the environment is out there. And then Michael Gerber with the E-Myth Revisited, what he talks about is exactly in the wheelhouse of the small business owner. Um, the biggest thing we do is we have this entrepreneurial moment, and then all of a sudden, we're stuck in the weeds in the day-to-day. And we've got to kick ourselves out of the day to day. And the way that you do that, again, is with systems and processes. And what I like to tell people is sports teams are run better than most businesses. And the reason they are is three things. One, they've got a playbook, systems and processes. Two, they practice, practice, practice. And three, they have a coach that's involved in a regular basis with the team. Yeah, and uh, no true word. I, I love that. Uh, it's, a, it's a truism, and I love that connection. Being a great sports nut like yourself, so um, yeah, love that. So, Jack, what's um, what's one thing a business owner you'd recommend should do um, after listening to the, this podcast? Well, we put a lot on them. Uh, and so if I were going to pick one of the many things that we did in 20 minutes or so, uh, I would tell you, read Michael Gerber's E-Myth Revisited. Um, it is the playbook for entrepreneurs. And what he underscores is cleaning out the clutter and staying focused on the most important things 
anchor them with systems and processes. Yeah, no, great, uh, great tip. Um, so just in closing, Jack, um, you mentioned you, and you showed your, your new book, Jack Daly's Life by Design. Um, so I certainly recommend that. And I've, I've read a few of your earlier books, which were uh, so valuable for me and being a, a business coach. Um, so we'll certainly, uh, we'll show that in the, the show notes and certainly encourage um, everybody to, to get a copy. And interestingly, you know, all that you talk about is sort of a good segue into our business transformation program that we're releasing shortly. Um, so there's some good al alignment there because I guess our approach is very much uh, similar to yours and what you've uh, um, done throughout your business life and your, your life. And, um, you yeah, know, I find it very motivating talking and listening to to people like yourself. So um, I hope our listeners uh, get the same motivation and, and benefit from uh, from listening to you. And again, um, really appreciate your time and um, catching up with you. Yeah, Michael. So uh, thank you for that. Uh, I, I would I would also say that the both hyper sales growth as well as Jack Daly's Life by Design are both in audio, and that audio is in my voice. Uh, and so people have come back to me in reviews and said, man, it's so good to listen to you talk about it personally because I feel your energy as it's coming through. Uh, and the beauty of the audio books is you can uh, you can increase the speed at which it goes, although I'll challenge your uh, listeners to uh, increase the speed when I talk. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I might try that because I'm actually, yeah, I'm a consumer of books by audio these days, so um, I'll, I'll get yours and try that. I'll let you know. <laughs> Anyway, thanks again, mate. You bet. Um, have, a, have a good holiday season, and uh, we'll talk to you in the next year. Yeah, awesome, mate. And for our audience, we'd greatly appreciate a review in iTunes or whatever platform you listen to us on. More reviews means we bubble up higher in iTunes, etc., so more business owners looking for podcasts to help with their growth will find us. 